Okay, the book I'm going to read from is a book called Hard Times, which is by Dickens. I really like Dickens because he's really funny and um, just has really good characters. So this book, um, there's a character who's um, a sort of head teacher, so that's why I like it, uh, but he's not very nice, unlike me. And um, he's totally and utterly obsessed with facts. I think it's quite a good portrayal of a really bullying head teacher. So I hope you enjoy it. Thomas Gradgrind, sir. A man of reality, a man of facts and calculations. A man who preys upon the principle that two and two are four and nothing over and no one is to be talked into allowing anything over. Thomas Gradgrind now presented himself, Thomas Gradgrind, to the little pictures in front of him, ready to be filled with facts. Girl number 20, said Mr Gradgrind, squarely pointing his square forefinger. I don't know that girl. Who is that girl? Uh, Sissy Jupe, sir, explained number 20, blushing, standing up and curtsying. Sissy's not a name, said Mr Gradgrind. Don't call yourself Sissy. Call yourself Cecilia. My, my father calls me Sissy, sir, returned the young girl in a trembling voice and with another curtsy. Then he has no business to do it. Tell him to call you Cecilia. Right, let me see. What is your father? He belongs to the horse riding, sir. Mr Gradgrind frowned and waved off the objectionable calling with his hand. We don't want to know anything about that here. You mustn't tell us about that here. If you please, sir, he, he breaks horses in the, the ring, sir. You mustn't tell us about the ring here. Very well, then. Describe your father as a horse breaker. He doctors six horses, I dare say. He's a veterinary surgeon, a farrier and a horse breaker. Give me your definition of a horse. <laughs> Sissy Jupe, thrown into the greatest alarm by this demand. Girl number 20, unable to define a horse, said Mr Gradgrind. Girl number 20, possessed of no facts in reference to one of the commonest of animals. Some boy's definition of a horse. Uh, Bitzer, yours. The square finger, moving here and there, lighted suddenly on Bitzer. Bitzer, your definition of a horse. Uh, quadruped, graminiferous, 40 teeth, namely 24 grinders, 4 eye teeth, 12 incisive, uh, sheds coats in the spring in marshy countries, sh sh sheds hooves too, um, ho hooves hard but requiring to be shot with iron, age known by marks in mouths. Now, girl number 20, you know what a horse is. She curtsied again and uh, blushed again and she would have blushed deeper if she could. Another gentleman now stepped forth. He was a government officer. Very well, said this gentleman, briskly smiling and folding his arms. Now, that's a horse. Uh, let me ask you, boys and girls, would you paper a room with representations of horses? After a pause, one half of the children cried in chorus, Yes, sir. Upon which the other half, seeing in the gentleman's face that yes was the wrong answer, cried out, no, sir, as was the custom in these examinations. <laughs> of course, no. Why wouldn't you? A pause. One corpulent slow boy with a wheezy manner of breathing ventured the answer. Because I wouldn't paper a room at all, I would paint it. But you must paper it, said the gentleman. You must paper it, said Thomas Gladkind, whether you like it or not. Don't tell us you wouldn't paper it. What do you mean by that, boy? I'll explain to you then, said the gentleman, after another dismal pause, why you wouldn't paper a room with representations of horses. Do you ever see war horses walking up and down the sides of rooms in reality? In fact, do you? Yes, sir, from one half of the room. No, sir, from the other. Of course, no, said the man, throwing an indignant look at the wrong half of the room. Why, then you are not to see anywhere what you don't see in fact. You are not to have anywhere what you don't have in fact. Thomas Gragrine nodded his approbation. Now I'll try you again. Uh, suppose you are going to carpet a room... Would you use carpet having a representation of flowers upon it? There being a general conviction time that no, sir, was always the right answer for this gentleman, the chorus of no was very strong. 
Only a few feeble stragglers, and yes, amongst them was Sissy Dupe. Girl number 20, said the gentleman, smiling in a calm strength of knowledge. Sissy blushed and stood up. So you would carpet your room or your husband's room, if you were a grown woman and had a husband, with representations of flowers, would you? said the gentleman. Why would you? If you please, sir, I'm very fond of flowers. And that is why you'd put tables and chairs upon them and have people walking over them with heavy boots. It wouldn't crush them, sir. They wouldn't crush you with her, if you please, sir. They'd be pictures of what was very pretty and pleasant. And I would fancy... You are not, Thomas Gradgrind said severely, to do anything of the kind, Cecilia Jupe. You must disregard the word fancy altogether. You have nothing to do with it. You're not to have in any object something you can't see in fact. You cannot be allowed to walk upon flowers in carpets. You don't find foreign birds and butterflies come and perch on your crockery. You cannot be permitted to paint foreign birds and butterflies on your crockery. You never meet with quadrupeds going up your walls. You must not have quadrupeds represented upon walls. You must see, said the gentleman, for all these purposes, combinations and modifications, this is the new discovery. This is fact.